All right, we are now going to complete the Berg balance scale. When you complete the Berg, you will have the handout. This test is um, intended to be read verbatim so for uh, standardized use, okay? So Dr. Shaw, could you have a seat? Item number one is sitting to standing. Here's my instructions. It says instructions to the patient. Please stand up. Try not to use your hands for support. Okay, she did not use her hands. She stood independently and I would give her full points. Each item has a total score of four possible points all the way down to zero. All of the criteria are listed on the test itself. So next is standing unsupported. So her legs will be touching the back of the chair. She can stand with her feet comfortably apart for this portion of the test. So yeah, comfortable. Please stand for two minutes without holding on. So here's another test where I hold the loop, I stand to the side and behind her, and use my stopwatch to time two minutes. We're not gonna do the full two minutes at this point. Number three is sitting with back supported but feet supported on the floor or on something. We're not gonna do that. Note that for full points, the patient is able to sit safely and securely for two minutes. If they are able to stand for two minutes, they automatically score a four for sitting for two minutes, okay? Um, that is actually indicated after item number two. If a subject is able to stand two minutes unsupported, score, four, score, score full points for sitting unsupported and go on to item four, okay? So that is on there for you. Now, standing to sitting. Dr. Shaw, please sit down. Perfect, I am watching for her use of hands, if she controls her descent, and if she uses the backs of her legs against the chair, which she did not. Next, we're actually gonna complete a full transfer, if you could stand up one moment for me, from one surface to another. So step to your right and have a seat. Okay, so you have two seats at 90 degree angles. So you're arranging the chairs for a pivot transfer is what it says. Dr. Shaw, transfer one way towards the seat and, have a, and sit, and then transfer back to this chair. Okay, please note, it is in your instructions, ideally one of these chairs does not have arms. One has arms and one does not, okay? You're watching for minimal use of hands versus definite need of hands if they require supervision or uh, one person to assist. Okay. Okay, Dr. Shaw, you can stand for me, please. Item six, we're gonna stand unsupported with eyes, you probably didn't hear me. We're gonna stand unsupported with eyes closed. Again, feet are in a comfortable position, whatever her desired position is right now. Dr. Shaw, please close your eyes and stand still for 10 seconds. 10 is all we're measuring right now. I'm using the stopwatch. And open your eyes. You're looking for if they can do that safely without supervision, if they need supervision, or if they can't hold 10 seconds. Item seven. We're gonna stand unsupported with feet together. We are grading if the patient can get their feet together without assistance, meaning without using a walker or my hand. So if they require hand hold or some support to get their feet together, that is scored. It's part of one of the items. Okay, so now at this point, we're gonna stand feet together. Place your feet together and stand without holding on. We're doing one minute, up to one minute, if they can. Eyes are open, looking straight ahead, okay? Item number eight is reaching forward with an outstretched arm. Note that essentially this is your functional reach test. We can turn. So Dr. Shaw, if you could turn to your right, face the windows, okay? 
So the ideal, it is nice to do this with a yardstick up against, the, uh, taped to the wall or glued to the wall. Most clinics will have that. And then you walk the patient up. Um, but we're just gonna do it with me holding it. Dr. Schaff, you could hold both arms up straight in front of you. And verbatim is, fingers should not touch the ruler while reaching forward. Um, and you ask the subject to use, use both arms to reach forward. Yep, just like that. Okay, come back, woo, come back up. Okay, so when you, if you need to hold the ruler or the yardstick, you're gonna have someone assist you. You'll have someone holding that, and then you as the examiner will be standing in the proper position. Thank you, ma'am. All right, Dr. Shaw, hold your arms straight out. Hold on just a second, come back up. And pull that back a little, put your arms straight out. That needs to be starting. Okay, now reach forward. Okay. Woo! Is that on purpose? Or did you actually lose your I'm balance? doing my best because I feel so safe. Okay. That's why I'm reading. I, okay. I, yeah. Okay. So that can happen, and that is how you grade it. So we're going to measure the distance that she reached forward. I'm pretty sure she reached 10 inches, but it was not safe. So we're going to knock off the point. Okay. Actually, we're going to give her a one because she requires supervision. Even though she can reach forward 10 inches, she required supervision. Um, or we could argue about the score there. She might be a zero because I did have to assist her. Um, that's not for you to understand right now. You just need to know the test and the parameters. All right, number nine is picking up an object from the floor. All right. So you just place an item in front of your patient and you say, Dr. Shaw, please pick that item up. Oops. Normally you won't have something with a lid that pops off. Very good. Okay, easy, quick. Sometimes it's not that easy. All right, turning to look behind over left and right shoulders. So if you could, yeah, I'll have you face the camera, okay? Stand with your feet apart comfortably. Okay, and the test reads, turn to look directly behind you over the left shoulder. And then repeat to the right. Good. And this one does actually give you a cue that you can give an object for the patient to look at behind them, which I will often do. Turn to look at the cabinets behind you and see if they can rotate behind to look. Okay. Um, next is turning 360 degrees. So I'm gonna instruct the patient to turn completely around in a full circle. Okay, go ahead. Okay, now let me demonstrate that the appropriate way. Okay, turn around in a complete circle. that would be appropriate, okay, and safe. So then you, she automatically did it, but you would say repeat to the other side. Okay. Next item is placing feet alternately on the stool. You will say to the patient, place each foot alternately on the step, and we're doing uh, continue until each foot has touched the step four times, okay? So this is timed. You're going to see if they can do eight, which is one, two, three, four, or each foot four times in 20 seconds. Okay, so Dr. Shaw, go ahead, tap each foot. Very good. Well under 20 seconds. She did not require assistance. She is full points. Um, although, I do think we need to work on your balance a little bit. <laughs> okay, the last two items. So the last one is standing with one foot in front of the other. 
The instructions are wordy for the patient. Understand that and just take your time. You might have to demonstrate this for the patient. Place one foot directly in front of, you wanna get through it before they do anything. So let me get through your instructions before you even try. Place one foot directly in front of the other. If you feel that you cannot place your foot directly in front, try to step far enough ahead that one foot is all the way in front of the other, or your heel of the front foot is ahead of the toes of the other foot. And if they can't do that, but they can take a small step that is also scored. So, okay, Dr. Shaw, place one foot directly in front of the other if you can, and hold there. This is balance. So that's actually a common mistake. So you're just gonna place one foot in front of the other like this and stand there, if you can. Hold right there. Okay. Yeah. And my stopwatch would be timing 30 seconds, if she can. Okay, you can relax. If she cannot do 30 seconds there, we wanna find out which item she is. So then we see if she can stand placing one foot ahead of the other so that the heel is ahead of the other foot's toes but they're not in tandem. If she can't do that, then we see if she can take a small step. So you work through those steps if you need to. The last item is standing on one leg, single leg stance. So I will ask the patient, stand on one leg as long as you can without holding on. Timing. Okay, and that was more than 10 seconds. Relax, and so she scores full, four, full points. Your timing as uh, unable to complete, unable to try. They can try but not hold 30, or three seconds. They can lift one leg and hold greater than three seconds but less than five. They can hold five to 10 or they can hold greater than 10. Okay, so we are not doing Never mind, I won't confuse you there. Okay, so that is the Berg. And pay close attention to the front page of the Berg that identifies cutoffs for fall risk and probability of falling.